Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. This is Eric KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. Give a big thumbs up for the effort of me making this video to bring to you. Leave your comments below and like on Facebook.com slash Ham Radio Concepts. And today we're going to talk about something that is another aspect of the hobby. And it deserves a video to explain it and show you because as Ham Radio Operators, there is so much we can do in this hobby, but it really helps to know all aspects of the hobby and all modes of communications. You know, we have HF, VHF, UHF, then we came out with digital, and digital took the market by storm, and there's all kinds of stuff integrating in with itself. Do you remember when they had D-Star, then they had Fusion, then they had DMR, and the question was, which one are we going to pick? And now you have hotspots that do it all, right? Now you have hotspots that cross-bridge it. Well, we're going to talk to, uh, today about something that I think you'll enjoy looking at and you may be interested in. What we're going to talk about is a device first off and couple that with telling you about the IRN, the International Radio Network. Now guys, I want you to keep your mind open on this because I know there'll be some comments with some opinions and I know there's going to be some people that are interested and not interested, but I want you to keep your open minds and see how in this day and age we're taking ham radio to the next level and connecting people that are not able to put up an antenna in their backyard like you and me. People that don't have repeaters in their area and people that just want to touch and have all the different ways of communicating possible. Now what I have in the, my hand right here is something called the Enrico T320. This is, this looks like a radio, right? This is actually a cell phone. This is a PTT enabled cell phone. And the purpose of this is to have a cell phone with apps that we'll talk about that actually bridge people on DMR and Fusion to someone using something like this over a cellular connection. Now, again, people that don't have repeaters, if you have cell coverage, which in this day and age, 99% of people have coverage in their area for cell phones, okay? And if they don't have cell phones, they have Wi-Fi coverage. So imagine being able to talk with your people that you talk to on DMR or Fusion or on Echolink with all you really need is a Wi-Fi connection or a cellular connection when you're on the road. Let's talk about it. This one has a touch screen on it, um, Android 7.0. And it's got the buttons down here too. So if you're not, you can't text from the bottom here. You can only text from the screen. The screen is a little bit smaller than something like an iPhone, yes. But um, if I, I will say that if you are vision impaired, this may not be for you. It is a little bit of a smaller screen, I'm not going to lie. It's hard to, to see it if you are vision impaired. And I know I have some hams that follow me that are vision impaired, so I will warn you about that. But there are models that have a bigger screen. So... Uh, PTT button on the side because it's a PTT radio so it gives you more of a radio feel instead of you tapping on the screen you have a button here you can assign the button to the programs like Echolink, Zello or TeamSpeak and we're gonna get into that TeamSpeak I'll show you what about it if you're familiar with TeamSpeak you're not using the same TeamSpeak settings as you are as a gamer so it's got a camera on the front and the back your volume selector up here and let me tell you this thing is super loud I, I get comments all the time man shut that thing up it's like I got turned all the way up it is a very very loud speaker on this radio so if you are working outdoors or you are uh, driving in a noisy environment you get a call you're gonna hear it I guarantee it um, we'll take the back off here real quick and I'll just show you this is a global unlocked phone that uses um, a regular sim or a micro sim or nano sim, excuse me, nano sim. So here is sim one, the bigger sim. Sim two, which is the nano sim over here, and then your micro SD card for extra storage. It's got some sort of waterproof uh, gasket around there. I'm not sure if this is full submersible, but it's built for outdoors, so it is a little bit ruggedized. All right, um, let me get this cover back on here, and I will pop that closed. Okay, so. What's funny is this thing here, see this antenna up here is for the cell service. Now, believe it or not, this thing gets better cell service than any phone I've ever had because nowadays phones have built-in antennas. 
this LTE antenna is actually on the top of the radio. So in my office at work, nobody gets cell service at all on any carrier. This thing had three bars. I couldn't believe it. Um, so it must have something to do with the external antenna um, getting increased signal like that compared to something that's flat as a piece of paper inside the phone, shielded with all the outside stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, we're going to turn this on. And uh, again, there, there are other models on here uh, for this company. And uh, I want to show you, I, I hope to get one of the uh, bigger and badder ones. But you get the idea that it, it is not RF radio, but it is bridging the gap for people that don't have RF in their area. You must be a licensed user to get on these apps um, on the TeamSpeak. In order to use this, you got to be registered, verified, put into the system as an amateur call sign. So not anybody can pick this up and use the app to, to get on it. Now, I know that's what a lot of people are thinking. They can just download the app and no. The app's about, I think... Th the app's about $3, I think, and once you download the TeamSpeak app, there's a setup process that goes with it so that you're not using the same TeamSpeak servers as the gamers. Because who, what gamer would want to sit on there and listen to us talk ham radio jargon, right? So I'll go through the setup here in a minute, uh, what this means, and show you about the app. So first, I'll look at the Echolink app. If you're not familiar with Echolink, Echolink allows you to communicate and talk with many other repeaters that are connected through Echolink. Uh, users like myself that are here on a phone with no repeater involved. Conferences where multiple repeaters and links are connected together. Now, Echolink is not a new thing, but it has been around for quite some time, and it's gotten a little bit more popular again with a lot of the newcomers to the hobby. So if I go to Echo Test here, Thing's pretty loud. Sounds like a walkie-talkie. KJ4YZI testing on the 320. KJ4YZI testing on the 320. All right, that's with the PTT button up here. So you can end on here, and you can go up to locations. United States, we can go to Area 4. All right, now this starts, uh, the dash R is a repeater. The dash L is a link. I used to have a link set up years ago. Uh, no repeater, it was just a simplex link. And no L or R would be just a user, uh, whether they be on an app or a computer or whatever, alphabetical order. Now that's just in foreland on, uh, you know, uh, United States. You could also chat on here and stuff. So there's a lot of people on Echolink. And, and check this out. You know, there are people out there, believe it or not, that have been a ham radio operator probably 50 years. And now they live in a place where they can't have an antenna or they've gotten rid of a lot of their stuff. And their only means of communication to get on here would be an Echolink app. So don't discourage them. Don't, don't talk down to it. It's not what the hobby's about. The hobby can be... We can learn all the modes of communication, whether it be through an app or whether it be terrestrial radio with a high-gain vertical in the backyard and the HF radio. But there's some people that get on every day. They love talking to their friends or family on ham radio to another repeater across the country or across the world with a free app like this. So it's it's ham radio at its finest bringing everybody together. And to have it on this, this phone like this makes it feel like some sort of radio, you know, with the PTT button. Now, if you do close the screen it still works in the background so you can push the button and it'll still work all right so echo link now that it's uh been updated for android and specifically for this device uh is a lot more user friendly compared to what it was one thing you have to be aware of is there are some counterfeit units that may look exactly the same with a different model number not supported by this manufacturer this website rather this company and they don't allow you to load Play Store apps or the appropriate apps. So NetworkRadios.com has uh, said that, you know, some of the, these radios here are authentic and loaded with the proper firmware or software to get you up and rolling. There are some eBay models maybe that uh, 
give you problems. And people have alerted me in the past when I did that Sure 8S video. They bought one that was different, and they had nothing but problems with it. And they, they I couldn't help them. Uh, so there are areas out there where they're selling these radios, and they're not working right. So just a heads up. We'll talk about TeamSpeak here. Now, TeamSpeak, this app costs a few bucks, but once you download it and buy it, um, you will be able to, you don't want to use it as the regular TeamSpeak. You want to go to the appropriate website to uh, internationalradionetwork.net, I think it is, and set up the settings for the IRN Crosslink server. So now you're using this not to talk to the regular people that you do on TeamSpeak with gamers and stuff. You're actually connecting it to the private guild or private server for ham radio operators. Now it pops up right there. If you haven't already registered, you got to do that. And that gets you logged in as a ham with the right keys and all that. All right. So we'll look at this quickly. Now, this reminds me of something like an R finder. There's no programming necessary. It's all point and click and it updates on the network automatically. So what you see here is right now I'm in the welcome channel and the welcome channel is where you go by default. Now let me explain the welcome channel. Uh, the welcome channel, anybody who puts these settings in, even if they're not a ham, can get into there. And But they can't talk uh, to ham channels or talk groups or cross links unless they're a ham operator. Now, the thing about that is I guess I feel that may be okay because nobody's really chatting in the welcome channel. Um, but the, the non-hams can get in there and kind of get their feet wet and see, wow, this is how people identify. This is how people talk on a radio. Maybe they're interested and they have questions. They want to see activity and they think, wow, this is pretty cool. It's all about promoting the hobby. It's not about me trying to be out here and be the best YouTuber there is. I'm just trying to promote the hobby, okay? So what you'll see is the welcome channel here and uh, wherever I went. Oh, I closed it. There we go. There's the welcome channel. Bob there on top, KB1UPZ is one of the administrators, and he's what we call the gatekeeper. Or he, he's always here, and he's always full of info and nice. He knows all about this. Um, he's got me running with a couple things when I first got this a couple months ago, and Bob was there to uh, really help me out, um, along with some other ones in there. Brian, M0NGO is another one uh, in uh, England, I guess. He's very knowledgeable in this. Couldn't be any nicer, you know, because uh, it's new for a lot of people. So in the welcome channel, you can either talk to somebody there or you can move on to uh, another, you know, talk group here. Let's say you get on here and you tell someone, hey, meet me in talk group one or talk group two. You can see those talk groups there. Those are the people that are in there and you can join talk group two and talk with them. Um, if you go down farther, you can look here. There's a lot of other stuff here. You got the guild, QSO, QSO and Net. Um, the guild is what really oversees this whole thing. I guess this project started as a smaller thing using TeamSpeak, and then they took off with a private IRN crosslink server. So you go down a little farther, and now you're going to see some all-star RF cross crosslinks. So now you can go in here and cross-link to the All-Star RF. So there's a lot of repeaters around the world that are connected to All-Star, and this would get you into those networks. Um, UK Hub, you have uh, Australia Hub, you know, Alabama Link. Now, the Alabama Link, uh, from my understanding, this also crosses into DMR and Fusion with, with different links. There are a lot of uh, networks out there and talk groups that are combined with IRN. So that's why you have to ID on this program. You have to remember you're going out somewhere on RF on here, even though you're going in on an app on a cell phone. And food for thought, here's a fun fact. Your cell phone <laughs> is a radio, okay? You're transmitting and receiving radio signals. It may be in the form of a phone, but you're doing that, whether it be on Wi-Fi or making a call. So, yes, this is technically still a radio. Um, so, yeah, you have uh, other groups in here or uh, talk groups that are actually connected to RF to other areas. So uh, repeaters, RF repeaters and nodes here, you know. So the IRN server 4 that you see there is the gap, a bridge and a gap between you on this device and the repeater GB3KU. So if I wanted to join into the, say, the Alabama link, I can scroll down, find the Alabama link. All right. Then I would hold on the Alabama link, long press. Oh, hold on. Long press. 
and hit join channel. And I can go back here to the welcome channel. Now I'm back in the welcome channel. So right now I'm in the Alabama link. IRN server 7. And he's on a uh, Zoom spot on DMR. So see, these guys are in the Alabama link on RF, and I can get right in uh, with this app. If you wanted to chat with somebody, you can simply hold, tap and hold on their name, and you can open a chat. You can, if you're an administrator, you have other options. But uh, you can chat on there, and, and uh, what's cool is what I want to do, I think it would be a neat feature, I can go here and create channel. So I can make a channel called Ham Radio Concepts. And we could all jump in there if you're on the IRN. And we can talk about different videos I had or talk about ham stuff, getting you know familiar, licensed, and all that. Um, uh, or upgrading your license or talking about new features or whatever. Uh, so that'd be cool if I started a Ham Radio Concepts channel on IRN. Uh, or let's say uh, you know I'm in my company vehicle and... I can't have a DMR radio or I can't have an antenna on the roof. I can stay in communication with this and, uh, you know, keep me radio enabled somehow with the IRN app, uh, whether it be Echolink or IRN. I still have a way to get to other hams and keep myself busy during the day if I have a long drive. So I think it really is a, uh, a, a, neat, a neat concept. Taking a look at their website, network-radios.com. Um, the person that I was talking with, CT1EIZ, and uh, he's got a few videos on YouTube as well of him using them. Uh, Duarte was his name, and if I pronounce that right. And uh, look, so they have the Enrico TM7. Now, this one looks reminiscent of a DMR mobile I've seen. It is a uh, 3G or Wi-Fi enabled radio mobile. Microphone in the front. Use it like a radio and tether it to your phone or put a SIM card in it. Um, so 199 for that. The Radio Tone RT4 looks a little beefier than mine, more like a Motorola style. Uh, if you're not into something with the buttons like this, you want something that looks a little more modern, um, the one I would like to check out is the TalkPod N58 right here. Just a touch screen on it, a little bit of a bigger screen. It is a bigger radio. It's a lot thicker, but uh, it's got a huge battery on it and, uh, you know, lasts quite a bit. They're out of stock right now on those. But uh, the TalkPod definitely uh, looks a little more modern than uh, something that what I have is my only uh, thing. I'd rather have something that looks like this. You know, you can get away with saying it's a company radio phone, you know. Uh, but, again, this one is 3G. Now, you can definitely use that with 3G. If you're not somebody that's a 4G LTE junkie that constantly needs 50 megs of data per second... Um, you can do, you know, you can get away with uh, having 3G at 10, 11 megs, uh, megabits per second, uh, which is plenty fast um, for, you know, basic use. Uh, I had 3G for a while and it worked fine. Here's another one, a TM8 uh, network radio, another mobile with a microphone. So it feels almost exactly like a radio uh, without, you know, you tying up your phone. So you'd have just a radio itself uh, with Android on it. Can you load other apps on it, like mapping apps? Probably. So you can probably, uh, it's unlocked Android, so you could probably put Google Maps on there and use this thing like a map if you wanted to, I'm guessing, and have the radio running in the background, you know, Echo Link and stuff. So this is the site here. They have, uh, I told you that thing was loud. So they have a bunch of, uh, you know, units here, a couple pages of them. They actually even have, uh, they do sell, Bob's R Finder uh, on here, uh, right here. R Finder M1. That's a DMR smartphone that I have, and uh, 
bunch of accessories as well for desktop charger mounts, bags, and such. All right, so you want my honest opinion. Well, I like the, the technology. I think this is a great idea. Um, the only complaints I have are the well, the speaker on the back is very loud. When this thing's ringing or on speakerphone, it's extremely loud. The radio part is extremely loud. But this earpiece right here could be a little bit louder. Um, when I have it to my ear, it's not as loud as it could be. I've tried turning up the volume all the way. It might have something to do with the waterproofing design, I think. Um, but other than that, uh, you can use a, uh, I guess they make an additional accessory for a headset, or you can use it Bluetooth, which would be in your ear. Um, other than that, um, you know, for, for my vision or blind uh, hams that follow me and always want to know, I would recommend um, this is not for you for the size of the screen. I'm just being fair that, um, you know, it is uh, not going to be good for your, uh, your eyes uh, if you can't see well or you're blind. Um, no real voice way of, of voice recognition or voice, uh, you know, through this to um, see what you're texting. Uh, as far as the uh, Android, traditionally on Android what I do is when I'm somewhere, like say I'm in an app or something, I'm in YouTube or whatever, normally, normally I'm... Uh, you know, in the app, and I hit the, the end button, and it takes me back home. That's how I use my phone. I hit end, and then I go wherever I need to go. With this one, it seems that you have to hit back. Here's the back button. So you hit back every time. If you're like five pages or six apps deep, you got to hit back every time to go back, 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 all the way to the home screen, unless there's a shortcut I haven't figured out. Normally, I hit end, and they stay running in the background, and I open up what I want. So I'm sure that's probably different on the other models. This one I just chose because it did 4G um, and, uh, you know, it was, was affordable enough. I wasn't going to pick up a K1 and uh, advise you of that yet. But that's uh, overall, it's a great feature. I guess, um, you know, the buttons on the side can be assigned for several things. Um, these two buttons on the side here, uh, maybe one for camera. So overall, they make a drop-in charger for it for here. And a belt clip um, that came with it that I don't have. So uh, other than that, it's a a really neat technology. I think we're really bridging the gap when it comes to uh, getting people connected uh, across the globe with various forms of digital, whether it be analog, digital, uh, C4 FM, DMR, D Star, and then now IRN. And just remember, one thing I would say is if you're on the Alabama link. You may get a couple people that, you know, you tell them that you're connected when they ask, well, how are you connecting to the system? Well, I'm connecting through the app on the International Radio Network or IRN. You're probably going to have a couple guys that are like, oh, yeah, yeah, you need a radio. You don't need to be on an app. But just don't confront. Just take it what it is and move on, you know. Um, some guys may welcome you that way and some guys may not. But that's just the way society is today on ham radio. Uh, people let it get to their head, and I'm no better than any other ham radio operator out here. I am just enjoying the hobby like all of us. So thanks for watching uh, the Enrico T320, networkradios.com. The link is in the description, and hopefully we can check out that Nana or that uh, TalkPod N58. I'd like to check that out and see the difference in, between this one and that one. So 7-3, thanks for watching. More videos on the way from KJ4YZI.